of our republic. We want to educate, encourage, enable the power. We stand for integrity, integrity. honesty, self-reliance, self-defense, Defense. and most importantly, no compromise on our foundational principles. principles. This is America's Voice Now. Find America's Voice Now on Facebook and at americasvoicenow.org. Here's Michael Evans. Good morning, America. My name is Michael Evans. You're listening to America's Voice Now. Thank you for spending your time with us this morning. We appreciate your attendance. Today, I'm going to discuss a number of very shocking and terrifying issues that have occurred last week. The mainstream propaganda ministry is hiding these issues from you, and they're not talking about that which America should really, truly be terrified about. You know, these scandals that you're seeing in Washington are the tip of a much larger iceberg than most Americans are even aware of. And today we're going to delve into and better understand the implications of exactly what has occurred this week. You're not aware of it because they don't want you to be aware of it. You're not aware of it because if you were... America as a nation would be storming the gates. What's occurred, and we're going to discuss this in depth today, what's occurred is the new federal regulations that have given the Pentagon, or where the Pentagon has actually given themselves, sweeping domestic law enforcement police power. Yes, you heard it. Our military, our Pentagon, this nation, has declared war, quietly, hidden, but war nonetheless, against the American people and the United States of America. Make no mistake about it. What they have done with this document and what they have done with the passage of this this regulation is not tantamount to war. It is war! The Pentagon has taken it upon themselves unilaterally to publish amendments in the Federal Register that affect key sections of the, of the legislation that affect civilian control and military cooperation with law enforcement in the United States. Many of you have heard the term posse comitatus. Most of you don't even know what it is. And it doesn't really matter anymore. Because right now, It's dead. Section 32 of the CFR, and that's the federal regulations, defense support of civilian law enforcement agencies. The United States Armed Forces, in concert with the Department of Defense and the Pentagon, have given themselves the following. The following power and authority, by the way, which if you want, if if you are a constitutionally aware individual, they have no authority under the Constitution to deliver to themselves. They may now, quote, engage temporarily in activities that are necessary to quell large scale, unexpected civil disturbances. Ladies and gentlemen, that is an open declaration of war. An open declaration 
of war. Large-scale, unexpected civil disturbance. Well, for the record, we need to understand what that means. I actually took the trouble to print out this treasonous piece of trash. And you need to understand exactly what this involves. I need the first pages. <clears throat> Talking about public comment. All right. For for the record, and I got to tell you, if you don't know what this is, there's more missing. For the record, if you don't know what this means, this is a statement from the Department of Defense Federal Register. This rule implements DOD regulations and legislation concerning restriction on direct participation of DOD personnel. It provides specific policy direction and assigns responsibilities with respect to DOD support provided to federal, state, and local civilian law enforcement agencies, including responses to civil disturbances. All right. The rule provides specific policy direction and assigns responsibilities to Department of Defense key in, uh, individuals providing support to, including response to civil disturbances within the United States. The <clears throat> support during civil disturbances, Section 2B. The President is authorized by the Constitution and laws. Read between the lines, people. And laws. Whose laws? The Constitution is the base foundation of law. No, no entity, Congress, the President, or anyone else, including the judiciary, may make a law that supersedes the Constitution. The President is authorized by the Constitution and laws of the United States to employ the armed forces of the United States to suppress insurrection, rebellion, and domestic violence under various conditions and circumstances. The employment of federal military forces to control civil disturbances shall only occur in a specified civil jurisdiction under specific circumstances as authorized by the president, normally through issuance of an executive order or other presidential directive authorizing and directing the Secretary of Defense to provide for the restoration of law in a specific state or locality. On Tuesday, December 28, 2010. Now, Mark that date, Tuesday, December 28, 2010. That was on a Tuesday, in between Christmas and New Year. The Department of Defense published a proposed rule requesting public comment. Get this! Two comments were received. Two. And only two! You know why? Because nobody knew it was happening. This is your government operating in secret. Where did they advertise? How did they advertise? How did they notify? Are you going to try to tell me that there's not one constitutional organization out there who refused or, or neglected their duty and responsibility to respond to this? This is freaking treason. Comment one, the definition given of civil disturbance is overly broad and encompasses any number of situations that the legislature and DOD entities might not have in mind at the time of drafting this rule. In addition, the definition of emergency authority is unclear. In what sort of civil emergency can prior presidential authorization be, quote, impossible to attain? This gives, what you don't realize is, and you have to read this entire thing. This basically states that the DOD and the Pentagon and the Joint Chiefs of Staff 
can act unilaterally without presidential direction if for some reason they can't get a response and the president cannot communicate with them. Are you flipping kidding me? This is a power grab of unimaginable consequence. You see, here's why. The Constitution authorizes the president to be the chief of all military enforcement or military forces. So how is it that the slave of the authorization declares itself the master to act universal or unilaterally without direction from the master in the event that the master cannot contact them? Let me tell you something. This declaration right here would have our founders not in a lather, not in a tizzy. They'd be calling for an armed resistance. And that's exactly what this is designed to block. This is no different than the shot heard round the world. These two definitions together, this is this question from, or a comment from one reader. In what sort of civil emergency can prior presidential authorization be, quote, impossible to obtain? These two definitions read together give an extraordinary degree of latitude to DOD entities within the borders of the United States. And finally, I question whether a rule is the appropriate venue for an expansion of this nature. Perhaps this is a task best left to Congress for full public scrutiny and debate. Should this really be a task left to the DOD to make a rule essentially gutting the Posse Comitatus Act? Despite the fact that this rule has received certification by the Office of Information and Regulatory Affairs, I seriously question whether there are not significant implications for its enactment under Executive Order 13132, Federalism. It is left to the DOD itself to determine when force is necessary, absent a presidential order and absent the cooperation of local authorities. Posse Comitatus is for all intent and purposes at an end. Wait until you hear the response from the DOD. We're going to take a commercial break. When we come back, if you are not alert, if you are not awake, if you are not aware, man, I God help you. Have a know-how, have a know-how. Stop and save up to $50 with Napa Know-How. Receive up to a $50 rebate Visa card by mail with qualifying brake parts purchase when you upgrade to premium or better. Stop by and ask for details. Pick up some Castrol GTX conventional motor oil for just $3.49 a quart. Napa Know-How. Napa Auto Parts, 311 St. Louis Street in West Plains. Out of 365 days a year, we celebrate holidays, anniversaries, and other important days. But there is one day you look forward to, your birthday. I wanna, wanna wish you a happy birthday. Ryan Steakhouse of West Plains is proud to bring you the Birthday Club weekday mornings with Cooper and Company. Our daily winner receives one buffet and a drink to Ryan. Just call gotcha. your birthdays in weekday mornings with Cooper, Cooper and Company at 255-0427. Brought to you by Ryan's and the Ozark's Best News Talk. And happy birthday to you. Cha, cha, cha. All right, we're back. I'm telling you, America, we are at a point where all hope all hope of a political solution is at an end. When you hear, by the end of this hour, you are going to understand exactly where we are. And if you don't get it by then, God forgive you. The comment ends with, Posse Comitatus is for all intents and purposes at an end. 
When I get later on into this document, and if you're watching this on YouTube and you're not prepared to sit through the next 45 minutes, this is on you. Because this is an open declaration of war and you need to be aware of it. You need to share this video and share this story with everyone and anyone that you come in contact with. From your minister to your mother. And everybody in between. Your boss, your co-workers, your friends, your family, Everyone needs to understand we have declared open war against the citizens of the United States of America. And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to go even further, because when you hear under and you understand in this document how the military has given themselves authority to take control of the civilian government, but they have to, quote, give it back as soon as possible. What? Is this Venezuela? Is this Bolivia? Is this Paris? Where the hell does the military give themselves the authority to seize control of the government under the promise that they'll turn it back over whenever conveniently possible? I haven't even begun on this topic. You better go get yourself a cup of coffee, hit the pause button, and go get yourself a cup of coffee and a sandwich. Then put your headphones back on and wake up your family, get them out there, and all of you stand ear to ear and pay attention. Because this, ladies and gentlemen, is the final straw. Posse comitatus, for all intents and purposes, is at an end. That's the public comment. Here's the DOD's response. This instruction cancels DOD Directive 3025.12. Civil disturbance, in quotes, is an approved definition in the DOD dictionary and makes no reference to the Posse Comitatus Act, Act being suspended. You know, the DOD can write themselves a dictionary. But a tyrant can make any definition anything he wants. That doesn't make it right. It doesn't make it lawful. It doesn't make it constitutional. Also, this rule does not make reference to the suspension of the Posse Comitatus Act. It lists those actions that are permissible and restricted under the Act. The author also recommends that Congress, rather than DOD, make the language clear and unambiguous. That's comment one. Get a load of comment two. By the way, this is an issue which affects the control of the United States of America, all of our government, all of our states, our cities, our counties, our law enforcement, and there were only two damn comments received. Two. Comment two. When the Posse Comitatus Act, 18 U.S.C. 1385, clearly applies to National Guard troops which have been federalized and are deployed under Title X authority within the United States. However, the courts have not definitively ruled on whether the Act applies to troops deployed under Title 32. And generally, it is assumed that the Act does not apply under those circumstances. If 182.4b of this rule is meant to clearly state that the National Guard is in fact to act in compliance with the restrictions of the Posse Comitatus Act while in support of civilian law enforcement officials while deployed under Title 32 authority as well as Title 10, then this is a welcome clarification of DOD policy. Mealy mouth two bit political doublespeak. But wait till you hear the DOD's answer. Mike, you notice how this came out as a CFR? Yeah. A regulation nation? <clears throat> right. Absolutely. This is an administrative... By the way, the, the Federal Register, for the record, is rules and regulations. Then I've told you before, and you've heard me use this phrase, they utilize rules and regulations that parade about as law. Here's the DOD's response to this. National Guard forces operating under Title 32 are under state control, and the Posse Comitatus Act would not apply. State laws govern, state law governs what actions state officials and state National Guard forces may take. That's their response. 
Their responses are one paragraph of mealy mouth doublespeak on issues which affect the Republic of the United States of America and who controls it. Let me tell you something. We are on the edge of losing our nation to treason. <clears throat> Executive Order Federal uh, 13132, Federalism. And, uh, wait till you hear the language they use here. It has been certified that 32 CFR Part 182 does not have federalism implications. Certified by whom? A group of attorneys who work for the actual government itself that is a declaring war upon us? That's like Hitler asking his number one chief legal counsel to authorize the murder of Jews. Well, of course he's going to do it. It goes on to say that this rule does not have substantial direct effect on, one, the states. A real, really? Two, the relationship between the national government and the states. Or three, the distribution of power and responsibilities among the various levels of government. I declare that, that every one of those bullets is an absolute unmitigated lie. A civil disturbance, group acts of violence and disorder, prejudicial to public law and order. That's their definition of civil disturbance. So basically, that can constitute you giving the finger to a police officer in a protest line, all the way up to the Boston bombers. Domestic emergency. Emergencies affecting the public welfare and occurring within the 50 states. You got to be flipping kidding me. How much more vague can we get, ladies and gentlemen? Basically, this gives the military the the ability to step in right now at any moment and declare that an emergency that occurs in Guam qualifies as an emergency for them to take control of the United States federal government. This is a junta, a military coup. And the interesting thing about that, Mike, is all of the military folks I had to deal with in the course of my time, yep. most of them knew as much about the Constitution of the United States as a, a goat does. Well, I got to tell you, where we are headed here is... There's a, there's so a, far outside the scope of reality to the average American. Uh, there's a nice piece in there, too, about the lash-up between uh, the FBI and the ATF and the Department of Defense. Yeah. The use of military police. Guidelines concerning the use of deputized state or local law enforcement powers by DOD uniformed law enforcement uh, personnel are outlined in DOD Instruction 5525.13. So they're already making the assumption it's going to happen. Well, they're not only making the assumption that it's going to happen, but they're leaving themselves the ability here to take control of lawfully deputized uh, civilian law enforcement. What I'm not understanding is the governors already have the ability to call out the National Guard for large-scale civil disturbances. How large a scale does something have to get that we're going to use the regular army to deal with it? What I can't even think of, I can't even think of a scenario where you would even possibly consider that this might even, for a fraction of a time period, be applicable. Wait till you hear how applicable this is. DOD components. Ladies and gentlemen, mark this spot in your video because this is going to be an important critical statement. DOD components, Department of Defense components, shall not take charge of any function of civil government unless absolutely necessary under conditions of extreme emergency. When using emergency authority as described in 32 CFR Part 185 and paragraphs A1IIC of this section, I get. I, I mean, look, folks. This is like the Obamacare bill. Any commander who is directed or undertakes to control such functions shall strictly limit DOD actions to emergency need, and shall facilitate the reestablishment of civilian responsibility at the earliest time possible. 
people. And no definition. The attorney general may assign a component law enforcement agency of the Department of Justice, such as the FBI or the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms, to lead operational responses to a civil disturbance incident. What? You mean F Troop is running the god darn country? Yeah, you got it. F Troop. We'll be right back. Fox News Radio, I'm Lillian Wu. Powerball ticket sales helping push the pot up to around $600 million right now. But there are at least two ticket holders already celebrating. Mega Millions pot holding $190 million hit twice last night. One winning ticket sold in New Jersey, the other in Virginia. A massive job of clearing and repairing tracks this weekend after a two-train collision in Connecticut, which left more than 60 hurt. The primary means of transportation for commuters from the New York area out to Connecticut. So when you talk about these trains, on a Friday afternoon, they are packed. If there's any good news at all here, is as you go through the cities of Greenwich and Stamford and Norwalk and Westport, moving up to Fairfield, you tend to drop off a fair number of passengers, so that would at least limit the crowd size a little bit. Fox's Trace Gallagher, Fox News. We report, you decide. Get a hold of Brian down at Ozark Mountain Self-Reliance. You can call him at 870-492-4030, or you can find him on the web at OzarkMTNSelfReliance.com. Located a half mile east of Walmart and Route 62 in Mountain Home. My friends over at Chantilly's Artisan Bakery at 255-2253, number 2 Evans Arcade Off Square in West Plains. Best damn bakery in 100 miles. You can reach Mary at 255-2253. My friend Bill Stone over at Stone Construction at 293-0116. Whether remodeling or doing new or custom construction or light commercial, Bill's the guy for you. 293-0116. West Plains Pawn and Gun, located on Route 160, just about a mile east of Walmart on the right-hand side. Westplainspawn.com. You can also reach them by a telephone at 417-256-3000 friends over at the battery station at 303 Washington Avenue right off the square in West Plains. You can find them on the web at batterystation.com and you can call them at 417-257-7799. Also, don't forget to stop by Pizza Hut for an outstanding lunch special between 11 and 2. Salad and pasta all together. You can also visit them on Tuesday evenings for family night. Kids eat free under 12. And Jason over at Wits End Classic Barbershop, sponsor of our telephone line. Make sure that you see Wits End Classic Barbershop for your next shave and a haircut. Outstanding, fine young man and a great patriot as well. He's on the square in West Plain. Last time on the Dennis Miller Show. Tebow cut yesterday. And I'm not, I don't live in dream world, though, but you don't live in dream world if you tell me he didn't win. He won his ass off. Tebs, admire you immensely, my friend. And uh, wish you, I don't know what will happen in the league, but I wish you the best. And you're, uh, you're a fine man. You're somebody that I would point out. And you can catch Dennis Miller weekday mornings 9 to noon. Dennis Miller on the Ozarks Best News Talk 107.1 The Point. News Talk 107.1 The Point weather sponsorships are available for your business marketing plans. Contact Cody or Josh at 255-2548 for more information. From the Point Weather Center for this morning, look for partly sunny skies and a high of 84 to kick off the weekend. It'll be partly cloudy tonight, although 68. Sunday should be mostly sunny and warmer with a high of 87 with winds to 25 miles an hour. There's a chance of showers and thunderstorms Monday afternoon with a high of 82. I'm Rod Tanner, and for more information, visit my1071thepoint.com. Coast to Coast AM brings the Ozarks a whole new feel for radio. Midnight to 6 a.m. every night here on the Ozarks Best News Talk 1071 The Point. Where else would you get callers talking about everything from UFOs to war trends, from mental energy to anomalies, and from lost knowledge to aliens? Listen to experts and researchers who are part of the guest list every night here on the Ozarks Best News Talk. Don't miss Coast to Coast AM with George Norrie. Midnight to 6 a.m. every night here on the Ozarks Best News Talk 1071 The Point. So I ask you, do you think for one second that Congress would have approved this? Do you? I mean, I get it that they're in bed with the devil. But even they would not be able to pass this. If this thing had ever seen the light of day for the public to be aware of, 
before it was passed, before it was announced as a change, a rule change. A rule change? Are you kidding me? You mean to tell me that you're going to state that based on a simple rule change, the military has the authority to take over the civilian government of the United States of America? This must be what Edison's partner was talking about. I'm sorry, uh, uh, Einstein's partner was talking about who came over here from Germany. And he kept trying to say when he was doing his swe- in his swearing-in ceremony, he kept trying to say that there was a way he, had, he had, w- had studied our Constitution so intently that he said that there's a way that this Constitution can be subverted. And he kept trying to talk about it. And Einstein actually shut him up and said, if you keep talking like that, they're not going to let you become a citizen. Go look it up. Boston. Extraordinary emergency circumstances where prior authorization by the president is impossible and duly constituted local authorities are unable to control the situation. Might I remind you of Boston? You see, this is the real world application of treason. Make no mistake about it. Boston was a trial balloon to see how the sheeple would react. And they got the exact answer they wanted. These people allowed these monsters to parade and storm through their homes, rip apart their doors, go into their houses unannounced in violation of the Fourth Amendment, looking for for one guy, and then cheered them as they left. Not cheering because they left, cheering because thousands upon thousands of federal officials had violated every constitutional right they had in a chase to find one squirrel. There was an article which I posted up the other day, and I, and I, I blew this thing wide open with this story from the Long Island Press by a guy named Jed Morey. And this, by the way, this article that I'm reading from now is by Joe Wolverton uh, over at the New American. You'll notice, by the way, that it's the Long Island Press and the New American that are publishing a story that has national implications And Congress is busy masturbating in front of the camera talking about IRS and Benghazi and the the, uh, AP phone record grab. Watch what the other hand is doing. Based upon my last statement, that has surprising and scary (laughs) implications. (laughs) Yes, it does. Here's what Maury states was, came from a civil uh, liberties attorney, Brian Afran, who calls the issuance of the new regulations, quote, a wanton power grab by the military. It's quite shocking, actually, because it violates the longstanding presumption that the military is under civilian control. Now, an unnamed defense official who was quoted in in this original piece in the Long Island Press, claims the authorization has been around over a hundred years. It's not a new authority. It's been there, but it hasn't been exercised. This is a carryover of domestic policy. In an apparent effort to assuage the fears of constitutionalists, This defense official says that the military, quote, doesn't want to get involved in civilian law enforcement. It's one of those red lines that the military hasn't signed up for. Bull. Exactly. No. That's BS and CS and HS. Besides, adds the anonymous Pentagon source, every person in the military swears an oath of allegiance to the Constitution of the United States to defend the Constitution against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Wolverton makes a very, very startling statement next. Quote, The taking of the oath is not disputed. It's the fidelity to it that is in doubt. Ladies and gentlemen, 
that language, that quote is likely to go down in history and be the equivalent of one of the ones m- representing representing our founding fathers that you see in uh, in in their quote books. Let me let me tell you something. Here's what Maury uh, accurately lays out um, on the laws governing the military meddling in domestic police uh, police activity, and this is his quote. The U.S. military is prohibited from intervening in domestic affairs, except where provided under Article 4 of the Constitution, in cases of domestic violence that threaten the government of a state or the application of federal law. This provision was further clarified both by the Insurrection Act of 1807 and the post-Reconstruction law known as the Posse Comitatus Act of 1878. The Insurrection Act specifies the circumstances under which the president may convene the armed forces to suppress an insurrection against any state or the federal government. Furthermore, where an individual state is concerned, consent of the governor must be obtained prior to the deployment of troops. The PCA, the Posse Comitatus Act, passed in response to federal troops that enforced local laws and oversaw elections during the Reconstruction period. Made un- and made unauthorized employment of federal troops a punishable offense, thereby giving teeth to the Insurrection Act. Together, these laws limit executive authority over domestic military action. Yet Monday's official regulatory changes issued unilaterally by the Department of Defense is a game changer. You want me to tell you how the camel got his nose underneath the tent? Back in 1985, the Department of Defense had themselves written into federal law as the chief detection and monitoring agency for counter-narcotics work. And they have done... Yeah, because they had no mission at the time. That's correct. They were chasing money. And this is how they'll get into this. They'll be chasing money. Oh, hell yeah. And and what happens is, in the, in the intervening decades, as far as Congress is concerned... They have done such a wonderful job at all of this counter-drug work that now they're like, well, these are reasonable guys for decades. They've done what we wanted them to do in reference to counter-narcotics work and blah, 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 blah. And you're right. It'll get to be a stage where they want to chase a bunch more money, and they will jump right into whatever they're told first. to do. That's right. And wherever the money takes them. That's right. Let me t- I'll tell you what. <clears throat> these regulations were not only sudden, but they were unpublicized, ladies and gentlemen. And that ought to tell you everything that you need to know. They were unpublicized because they didn't want constitutionalists and vigilant watchdogs to recognize what was going on. However, the U.S. Army Chief of Staff, General Raymond T. Odierno, Odierno, Odierno I don't know how to pronounce it, Telegraph this taking of uh, unfettered authority in an article published last year by the Council on Foreign Relations. Oh, our friends. Our friends. Our friends friends over at the CFR. The real power, the real string pullers in not only the United States of America, but the globe. If you don't believe that the Council on Foreign Relations is Satan itself, make no mistake about it. You haven't done your homework. In the May 2012, May and June 2012 issue of the shadowy organization's official uh, magazine, Foreign Affairs, Odierno and the CFR. Now, here, here you've got a, a, a U.S. Army chief of staff colluding, colluding with the Council on Foreign Relations. Odierno and the CFR said the armed forces should address, quote, challenges in the United States itself in order to keep the homeland safe from domestic disaster, including terrorist attacks. Here's what Odierno wrote. Where appropriate... Now, this is, remember, this is the U.S. Army Chief of Staff, General. Where appropriate, we will also dedicate active duty forces, especially those with niche skills and equipment. Read that, snipers and uh and uh EOD explosive ordnance disposal especially those with niche skills and equipment to provide civilian officials with a robust set of reliable and rapid response options 
they already have the framework for setting this up nationwide. Well, it, in El Paso, Texas, and through all of the joint intel centers, of which there is one in every state. And supposedly these are only counter drug, quote in quotations, counter drug. Yeah, and and all you need to do to change their mission is wave a pen at it. Take you about eight minutes. Here we go, folks. Let me tell you something. Mark these words. Today is the 18th of May. Mark my words. This is a declaration of war and will go down as such in history somewhere in the future. Assuming we're able to hold on to our republic. Where do you stand? They say they want to control your guns, but what they really want to do is control you. Hi, it's Glenn Beck. Since the gun debate was settled in 1791, it's obvious this debate is really about control. Control over taxes, health care, schools, and yes, our Second Amendment rights. My new book, Control, Exposing the Truth About Guns, picks apart line by line the idiotic gun control arguments being spewed all over the media. From Piers Morgan to Michael Bloomberg to Rachel Maddow, the lies and now. Control, a new book by me, Glenn Beck. Pick it up or download your copy today. Visit glennbeck.com for more. Hi, it's Hugh Hewitt on the next Hugh Hewitt Show. The next governor of Virginia, Ken Cuccinelli. The current senator from South Dakota, John Thune. I'll also be joined by Bill Kristol, and we'll talk with all of them about immigration reform and what is ahead in the United States Senate and Marco Rubio. Don't miss any minute of the next Hugh Hewitt Show. Sundays from 6 till 7, following Money Talk with Bob Brinker, it's the Weekend Journal with Hugh Hewitt on the Ozarks Best News Talk 107. There's one man on this earth who really gets it. It comes down to one sentence and three words, secure the border, and they won't do it. Well, look, we got a trigger here and a plan in six months, and I don't want to hear the bull crap, the bureaucratic bull crap. Folks, I lived through this in 1986. This is a redo. Or some of you might say a redux, but it's a redo. Secure the border. Mark Levin is on the radio. Weeknights from 5 till 8, Mark Levin on the Ozarks Best News Talk. Are you looking to save money? Did you know that in the last 20 years, interest rates have never been this low? That's why you should make the smart call today to West Plains Savings and Loan to start your home mortgage. Just imagine how much money you'll save. Key word is save, as in savings and loan. Your loan starts here and stays here. Never would it be sold to a secondary lender. Call today, 256-3042. That's 256-3042. West Plains Savings and Loan. Equal housing lender. Member FDIC. People, what you need to recognize is that the Council on Foreign Relations and and this uh, U.S. Army Chief of Staff General Odierno have telegraphed the punch. And they did it in May of 2012. And in light of the Pentagon's unilateral absorption of power as a police power, remember what this guy said. Because this is equivalent to, in three days, we're going to fundamentally change the United States of America. Listen to what he says. Where appropriate, we will also dedicate active duty forces, especially those with niche skills and equipment, to provide the civilian officials with a robust set of reliable and rapid response options. Might I bring to your attention, Boston. Might I bring to your attention that this is just the latest in a regulatory attack on the United States of America by the traitor-in-chief, our chief treasonist, Barack Hussein Obama. And his administration has been doing their damnedest to convert our military into an all-powerful and unrestrained personal army that is answerable only to him. Might I remind you of his promise and his quote, where he stated that the only goal that that, that, uh, we had as a nation was to develop a civilian force as well armed, as well supported, as well financed as our military. 
That's that transformation stuff. I'm going to ask you to take a look at a couple of circumstantial issues. The National Defense Authorization Act, which entitles the military, this is the American military now, to capture Americans domestically and foreign, whether inside or outside of our borders, and detain them indefinitely for a belligerent act. Remember these definitions when they charge you because you will have to define belligerent act in your defense. You will have to define indefinite detention in your defense. Oh, wait a second. Stop right there. That's right. You're not entitled to a defense. Habeas corpus is suspended for you. Oh, I forgot. You're not entitled to a defense. The rules of habeas corpus are suspended for you under the NDAA. You are barred and prohibited from access to the court. You don't have access to a counsel. You don't have access to a lawyer. You don't even have access to your family. And guess what? They don't even have to tell your family that you exist. They don't even have to tell them that you're being held. This is, this is the definition of fascism and dictatorship. And it is now fully bloomed. This flower of poison, this fruit of the unholy tree has now blossomed and matured and ripened. And this is why we should not have an all-volunteer military. This is why we should still have a draft. You see, the the NDAA, coupled with this piece of... uh, I I can't say what it is a piece of other than legislation because I'll be off the radio permanently. This is a... Stalinist, a Hitlerian, authoritarian, uh, authoritarian piece of legislation that is the clearest and most present exigent danger to the United States of America right now. The IRS thing be damned. Benghazi be damned. That was about gun running, by the way. That's our segment next. We're almost to the 8 o'clock hour. Our next segment is going to be on the treason of Benghazi because what they were doing there was selling guns to the Islamo-fascists who were effectively arguing we're fighting on one side but we're really arming and paying on the other side. And by the way, that's how you keep a war going. You you fund and, and support both sides. That way, whichever side wins, you win. And meanwhile, you get to rob everybody in the nation of their money and their rights. But when you look at this, this is a Stalinist, Nazism, this is fascism and totalitarianism. I don't even give a damn what definition you use. You pick your own. What this is, what this is, is a coup. President Barack Hussein Obama is now in total dictatorial charge of the United States of America in combination and utilizing the army as his backing arm. Yeah, but it took them a long time to set it up. They've been setting this up for a hundred years. But this way, right now, these scumbags are at the end of a 100-year race. And they've been handing off the baton from one scumbag to another for the last hundred years with one goal in mind. Achieve the end of the race and be the first in line. And Barack Hussein Obama, the traitor-in-chief, the number one tyrant in the United States of America, can now read the fine print on the finish line, the tape across the track. He can read the fine print. And boy, oh boy, oh boy, he is desperate to reach the end. 
It's interesting. This rule went into effect May 13th. Yeah, it's May 13th. One week ago today. Uh, five days ago. Amongst all the hubbub of Benghazi. Well, ben, don't you see that Benghazi and the IRS thing and all the rest of this crap is all intended to be one thing and one thing alone? Misdirection. Misdirection. That's the goal. Make sure that no one knows that while you are waving your left hand with $100 bills in it, you're pulling a gun with the other. Well, they've done a pretty good job of setting up the uh, infrastructure for all of this. I mean, all the information analysis centers, you know, the state national guards all have their the headquarters fusion units. centers. Yeah, yeah, all of that. Which, by the way, have not, have not solved a single issue. Not one of the fusion centers has ever solved a single domestic problem. Did you know that? Not one. In fact, where's the fusion center that was supposed to track the Boston bomber? I'll tell you something. You know, I don't like the idea of, of the talk about, you know, false flag operations and all that. I don't, I don't, I don't uh, d- disagree with or argue with the fact that they occur. I mean, look, anybody who's ever done their historical re- review, and, th- and this is not me talking now. This is every historian who's got any credibility whatsoever will tell you that we utilized the force, false flag to get into World War I with the sinking of the Lusitania. And now, subsequently, it's very, very clear that we utilized the false flag operation or allowed an attack to occur in, Pearl, in, in what's called Pearl Harbor. I mean, look, no one, no historian who's got any credibility whatsoever will deny that Pearl Harbor was allowed to occur just enough, and they left just enough boats there. And make no mistake about it, by the way, the vast majority, 79% of the U.S. force, was moved off the island just weeks before. And they left just enough there, just enough sacrificial lambs that the blood would piss off the United States of America and the citizens and, dema- and they would demand we go to war. That's what this is all about. What will be the trigger for America to demand that Obama and the military declare martial law or some dictatorial new policy. Mike, I got a question. And then they'll pack the Congress with a bunch of their sycophants. And we're done, folks. It's down to armed resistance at that point. You know, the other thing that that coincides with all of this going through the date is that that date to which they agreed in reference to the budget that they weren't going to let the budget go over? Yeah. That's today. And they still haven't come to agreement on what they're going to do with the budget. I'm not sure I understand the correlation of what you're saying here. Well, the whole misdirection thing, okay? We oh, have, I see. We have a $17 trillion budget that needs to Debt. be handled, okay? But because we're looking at Benghazi and we're looking at the Associated Press and we're looking at all these other stars and stripes flying through the atmosphere, we're not paying attention to the fact that we just went past that time period when we were supposed to have an agreement on how we were going to control the national debt. Right. So it, it, so basically what this will allow is a financial collapse to be the, 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 uh, the spark in the powder room. Well, somebody needs to be paying attention somewhere. People, I'll tell you what, this is the end of this hour or the end of this segment. This is only our first segment. Let me tell you something. My blood pressure, uh, you know what? This makes me so mad my fingers tingle. And if you are not angry, if you are not furious, if you are not hopping up and down right now, don't call yourself an American anymore. Because what you have known, what you have seen, what you have felt, the benefits that you have received under this republic have just been stolen away from you and you never even knew it. Tyranny has descended upon America. We have assumed control. We have assumed control. Resistance. We have assumed control. Resistance is futile. We are the Ozark's best news talk, KBS.